hard work too. Hey, right now. We're going to So here's the thing. The next English tour, 40 minutes. The next Spanish tour, only 36 minutes. Your choice. Before we start the tour, firstly, if you need any guest assistance or have a medical emergency, or if you drop something of value off the side of the tram or have any sound or video issues, just reach up and grab the red emergency cord that runs. <laughs> of any kind during the tour and be prepared. Our tour today features loud noises. While on Bruce Trilogy and Avengers Endgame. Now, as we make our way up this hill, I want to direct your attention to your right-hand side. You might notice a bridge and a train, and these are actually big pieces of Universal Studio tour history. The bridge is what we call our collapsing bridge, where our train used to drive over it as the bridge collapsed in the process. And the train is our runaway train, which used to catapult itself towards the tram, then stop right before impact. But I want to put an idea into your heads. If we were to put that train in a movie or a TV show, it would be called Ample. It could take us to the distant future of 2015 and back to the future too. Or they could take us back to the Stone Age and the Flintstones starring John Goodman. Or even somewhere a little more magical. That's right everyone, we have the Ford Anglia from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. But this is actually just one out of 17 and a half yeah, versions of the car that, that were used during filming. Yeah. We have my favorite car, which is actually a boat. It is the Craw Daddy from Jordan Peele's Us, where Winston Duke fights the tethered version of himself. And if you look at the back, you might be able to still notice some of the blood splattered on it, but don't worry, it's fake. We also passed by the gyrosphere from Jurassic World. But you might have noticed it looked a bit different, and that's because there was no glass. Well, in fact, there was never any glass to begin with. That was all added in post-production using CGI so that you wouldn't see the reflection of the camera in the glass. Now, speaking of Jurassic, our Jurassic Park films were some of the most successful films of all time, but in fact, Jurassic World, starring Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, is the highest grossing Universal Studios film of all time. And speaking of Jurassic, it looks like we're headed directly into Dino Territory. Welcome to Jurassic Park. And uh, it looks like they aren't in them, so keep an eye out, everyone. We might have some dinos on the loose. Oh, there they are. Hey, guys. Wow. <laughs> uh, did someone make that wet? Oh, well, don't worry. That's definitely the only time that will be happening on this tour. Definitely. And speaking of water, weather plays a huge role in the Jurassic films. For example, the lightning and rain the first time you see the... Uh, 
mưa tàu mưa tàu mưa ơ dễ mà ơ tàu mưa này có phun nước tàu mưa uống mưa là có mưa chứ có gì đâu ờ muốn mưa thì có mưa nè giò phun nước Stop, which is Little Europe. Little Europe has been Wales in the Wolfman, Egypt in the Mummy, and Transylvania in Dracula. But you might recognize it as being the afterlife. That's right, everyone. Welcome to the good place. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. What the dog? Cool. This location, the afterlife. I've never ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. <laughs> Maybe it's not all that bad. Yeah. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Now, coming up on your right hand side, this Đâu is where all our Court of Miracles. Now, the Court of Miracles is where most of our monster movies were shot. Really, anytime you've seen angry villagers with fire and pit pitchforks, it was probably shot right here in our Court of Miracles. Now, we've also shot many other things here in Little Europe. For example, if we have any fans of Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement, this was the royal country of Genovia. We also have these barrels of gasoline. I don't think the shark will find us back here. shark however the shark they did use when filming jaws was in fact a real terror See, that's a much more like shark the shark is frustrating it didn't really work all the time it didn't work all also all. just a reminder to remain seated on the tram thank you they were always saying the shark is not working for me the shark we just waited around we just waited and waited, and waited. the shark this head and they hang and they come down and they do hang and <laughs> now, although the shark had a lot of malfunctions, it was actually a good thing because originally Jaws was supposed to be released in the winter, but because of all of the malfunctions, it got pushed to the summer, making Jaws the very first summer blockbuster of all time. That shark did have a name, and it was Bruce, named after Bruce Raymond, who was Steven Spielberg's lawyer, who continues to be his lawyer to this day. It's also a name of another familiar shark, Bruce from Finding Nemo, who was named after our shark because of all of its success. Now, right now, we're headed into our residential sets. Super. 
Serbia can appreciate. It's a good name. Many of these houses are fit with their very own kitchens, bedrooms, dining rooms, living rooms, which is very helpful because they can just walk right in, film any scenes they need in any of the rooms in our houses, and you can also just pick a different room in a different house because who will know? And that's very nice so you don't have to travel all the way back to the front lot and use one of the sound stages. A lot of these houses are also what we call hero houses, so a hero house is basically just where the hero of the story lives. Three, say hey Norman. One, two, three. Hey Norman! Oh, I still don't think he saw us. No, oh, he's probably busy. You know, he has to run this whole motel on his own. Oh no. Alright, everyone, you know this happens sometimes on our tour. Uh, best thing to do is just stay quiet. I, I don't think he noticed us. Hey Gail. Oh no. Uh, all right, yeah, Doozy, I, I think we should probably get a move on here. Yeah, yeah. Get y'all, get y'all! What's up, what's behind our movie crash site set from Steven Spielberg and Ron Howard's wow. War of the Worlds. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around the uh, vision of Steven. Again, the city yeah, we were wow. talking about the war of the world. That thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Day, why, because yeah, it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. Well, you're doing good. Keep guys on me. That's my comment. Listen, I want you to close your eyes. Okay, you know, close. Dude, yeah. One man. One man. Robbie, get in. Get in. first home and I love it here and uh, I keep coming back <laughs> is actually a real Boeing 747 that was purchased from an airplane graveyard and destroyed specifically for the making of this film. You might be wondering why the top of it is off and that is actually for a very important reason. It wouldn't fit under the Los Angeles freeway when it was on its way over here. And when it was time to put it back on, Steven Spielberg said, no, I like it this way. It looks like the aliens came and the top of it off. And this is a great example of a practical effect, so much okay, the okay, opposite okay. of CGI. Uh, Steven Spielberg wow. uses a lot of practical effects in his work, uh, but we also use a lot of CGI. So here are some examples of when we use wow. CGI in our films.
whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? What? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. Ah, my little baby so Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy, a gold rush frontier town, lies a sinister city. Welcome to the world of the old. Everybody hold on! Oh, 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 o